Welcome to the Devos and Dumbbells Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Ayers. We talk about faith, we talk about life, and we talk about fitness. Thank you for joining us. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number five of the Devos and Dumbbells podcast. I am so thrilled that you are with us today, whether this is your first time. We just want to say welcome in, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I'm so pumped that you are here. Like I said, my name is Jared Ayers. And um, this is Devos and Dumbbells. We talk about a lot of things, and uh, I just my hope for this is that you can be encouraged throughout your week. This would be just a little bit of a push, a challenge, maybe uh, ultimately some just encouragement to start your week off and get yourself through the week. Um, as we always do, I just want to open this up with a word of prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and jump right into the content today. Got some good things to talk about. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much. Um, for this podcast and the word I feel you placed in my heart for this time. I just pray for everyone listening or watching, God, that we could be encouraged, that we could be stretched and challenged, and that we can um, do the things that you've called us to do. God, we love you. We thank you. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this time, into this moment. Have your way. And I just pray that you would guide us throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So today, guys, I want to talk about fear. And it's it's kind of funny with everything that's going on, you know, the coronavirus, everything shutting down. Um, I've actually had this talk planned for like three or four weeks before this was even a thing. So I think it's fitting that we're talking about fear. And I want to talk about it reading from Matthew chapter seven. We're going to be reading verse 24 through 27. And uh, this is a really encouraging verse. And it's not maybe your typical fear verse. You know, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. That's a good one. Um, that's a great verse, but that's not the verse we're looking at. This is Matthew 7, verse 24. So let's just read it. It says, anyone who listens to my teaching, this is Jesus talking, by the way. If you have a red letter Bible, these words are red. So it's Jesus. He says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. Verse 26, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds their house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So the point of this verse that I see, the first thing that jumps out to me and the question I want to ask you today is what is your foundation? What are you building your life on? Because this verse says, if it's not built on the right things, if it's not built on the word of God, then when storms come and rains come and floods come your way, that it's going to collapse and it's not going to be uh, long lasting. And so I just wrote down a few things. These are the first things that came to my mind when I think of some things that maybe people build their foundation on. And guys, inherently, some of them, not they're not even bad per se, um, there, some of them are just normal things and they're not, they're not bad in and of themselves, but they're things that will not last if that's your core, if that's your foundation. And so I just want to talk about a couple of those. The first thing is relationships. Some people build their life around relationships. And again, relationships are great. God did not call us to do life alone. I am, we, we need the right people in our lives. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. It also says um, we need two people because if one falls, the other one can pick them up. And so relationships are very important, but relationships aren't necessarily my foundation. Like I said, they're great. We need them. Absolutely. But if I'm building my life around relationships, if I'm building my life around a single person, that person can hurt me, right? We're human. We make mistakes. If I'm building my life on uh, on the foundation of, of a relationship, <coughs> excuse me, the person's likely to fail. And that's just, that's just human nature, right? We're all going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up. And so that's a shaky foundation. Um, maybe, maybe you've experienced this. Maybe you've trusted someone with your life 
and we, act, we, we should trust people. Absolutely. But maybe you've, you've built your foundation on a relationship and that relationship is no longer there. And so that foundation is not there and it rocked your world. And when, when things happen like that, it's normal for that, um, to take a, a huge impact to, to affect us negatively. But maybe you've experienced that when you've built your, your, tr- all your trust and all your hope in this relationship and that relationship's not there anymore. And it's left you hurting and it's left you shaking and it's left you broken. So that's just one thing that I think people build their relationship or excuse me, build their their life on. Another thing is the approval of others. And you've probably heard it. If you live by approval, you're going to die by the lack of it. You know, I think we need approval. I think there's something in us that likes to, you know, that that wants to be approved by people. In fact, um, one of my love languages is words. If you've ever taken the five love languages test, which I highly recommend, uh, one of the things that makes me feel loved is when people express their approval or when they tell me things. And so I think words are important, but we can't build our foundation on the approval of others because, again, we will die because of the lack of approval. And so that is also a shaky foundation. Another thing I wrote down is over possessions. And maybe you've seen this time and time again. And nothing's wrong. It's not wrong to have things. um, But Literally, in a moment, that stuff can go up in flames. I've had some friends um, whose entire house burnt down, and they lost every single possession that they had. And what kept the family together is that 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 wasn't their foundation. That wasn't what their life was built on. Their life is built on truth. Their life is built on the Word of God. And so they made it through that. But when you put all your possessions in, I mean, when you put all your um Foundation. When you build your foundation on possessions, it's likely to fail you too. So that's another thing. One thing that I see a lot of people build a foundation on is their career. And I believe in work. I believe um, our life should have purpose, and especially if you're doing something that you love to do. Um, work is awesome. The Bible talks about work. It tells us not to be lazy. It tells us to work, and it's great. But you can't build your foundation You can't build your life on your career because, again, in a moment, you know, the economy dips up and down. Things happen. That could be gone in an instant. And so that's also another shaky foundation. The last one that I wrote down is our talent. And this is something um, we see a lot. And this is something that I struggle with as as my personality, right? I like to be an executor. I love to accomplish things. But my foundation my 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 house, if you will, is not built on the foundation of my talents because, you know, God gives, God takes away. That that could be gone in a moment, and I might not be as skilled as I once was, or things happen in our life that are beyond our control. And so again, that's just another shaky foundation. And so this scripture, it says, "Who builds their house on a solid rock." It's talking about the word of God. It says, when you build your house on the word of God, when storms come, when rains come, when the floods are coming, you're going to be able to stand because you have a solid foundation. That's why we have to build our lives on God's word. It doesn't mean the storms won't come. Some of the strongest buildings in the world are going to be tested by the wind. So the storms are the storms are unavoidable. If you've you've probably heard the old Baptist preacher say, if you're not in a storm, you're probably going into a storm or just coming out of one, right? Like storms are just a fact of life. You know, when a boat is anchored in a harbor, it doesn't mean that the boat isn't going to have to face some winds and some rains. It just means it's not going anywhere. Because it's anchored, because it's hooked to the right thing. It's the same way with our foundation. When our foundation is solid on God's truth, the word of God, the things that Jesus tells us, that's when our foundation is solid. That's when the storms come and the rains fall and all hell breaks loose in your life. That's when you're going to be able to stand secure. And so when fear creeps in, when you have a solid foundation and fear creeps in, you're able to deal with that fear. You're able to control that fear because your foundation is built, your house is built on the word of God. And um, even the winds and the waves can't shake that. And so I guess we have to answer the question, how then? How, how How can we build our house on a solid foundation? And the one thing that came to my mind was we have to control the influences that come into our life. You know, with social media, with, you know, TV media, print media, all these things coming into our brains, bombarding our minds. There's so much that's fighting for your attention. And you have the ability to control what influences you have in your life. Did you know that your Instagram has a block function? (laughs) It has an unfollow function, 
right? You can control the people that you're looking at. You can control the people that are speaking into your life. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, is it encouraging or is it discouraging? Is it building me up or is it tearing me down? So that's one of the things, but predominantly the the things that are going to influence our life, they're going to be a firm foundation is the word of God. And so are we spending time reading the Bible? Are we spending time praying? Are we spending time worshiping God? Joshua said, he said, I meditate on it day and night. I keep these words on my lips. And so when things happen, when when fear creeps in, when stuff happens in your life, when the storms come, you can say these things to yourself based out of the word of God. For instance, God has not given me a spirit of fear, like I mentioned before. God is faithful Right? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You can say these things over your life when the wind and the rain comes. And so as Jesus said, we have to build our life on a firm foundation. When the storms come and they will come, you will, you will face some things that are beyond your control. If you're built on the right foundation, you are going to withstand the storms. Now, all these things I listed before, relationships, approval, possessions, careers, and talents, like they're not all bad things. And I want to touch on relationships for a moment. You got to have the right relationships in your life for sure. When storms come, when things break loose in your life that you cannot control, you need the right people that are going to push you, that are going to encourage you, that are also, hear me, also built with a foundation of truth on the word of God. You need those people. And so just be encouraged today when fear creeps in, Build your house on a strong foundation so when the storms come, you will be able to withstand because it's built on a solid rock, not on sand. It kind of rhymed. I didn't mean for it to. (laughs) Built on a solid rock, not on sand, and you will withstand the storms. So hopefully that encourages you today. One thing that I want to talk about in regards to fitness is what, what I call and what I've heard said is called the big rocks of fitness, meaning If you pay attention to these three things, whatever your fitness journey is, whatever your goals are, if you pay attention to these three things, you're going to see success as long as you as long as you're consistent with these three things. And the first thing comes as no surprise is exercise. Okay, now, before you tune out, listen to me. Resistance training. This isn't this isn't up for debate, by the way. This has been proven by science. Resistance training is the best form of exercise for you. It's the best when it comes to weight loss. It speeds up your metabolism. Obviously, it gives you strength gains. And the reason it speeds up your metabolism is think of it like this. When you do cardio and for uh, we should do cardio. But when when your focus is strictly cardio, your body is going to become really efficient with calories, meaning If your body knows you're going to be burning and you're going to be running and running and running and beating your body up with cardio for an hour every single day or more, it's going to conserve those calories. So throughout the day, your metabolism is going to slow down because it knows, hey, Jared is going to run me this afternoon. And so I'm going to need to hold on to those calories so I can have energy for the run. So your body's going to hold on to those calories. And as your body becomes more efficient, it's going to require more cardio to burn those calories and and who wants to add more of that right so that's just a, that's just one example but with resistance training your body is having to repair what it broke throughout the workout and so your muscles are you know, you tear them up when you work out. And so they're having to rebuild themselves during the day. So that's why your metabolism speeds up with resistance training. And I know a lot of people, just specifically women, like, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be bulky. That's, that's a huge, it takes a lot to get to a place where you look bulky. And so that's just a, that's an unrational, that's an irrational fear of most people. But exercise is the first big rock. If you pay attention, whatever your goals are, if you pay attention, if your goals are cardiovascular endurance, if your goals have to do with that, then that's okay. That's your focus. I'm just talking about what I see. So this, the first thing is exercise. The number two, obviously, is nutrition, right? It's the law of thermodynamics. Calories in, Versus calories out. You got to think of calories like energy. Okay, your body requires energy. It requires requires full uh, fuel, and calories are made up of what are called macronutrients. Without getting too scientific, it's protein, carbs, and fats. And your body needs those to operate. And so, um, 
there's a difference between good calories and empty calories, right? I can eat 100 calories of vegetables and I can eat 100 calories of chocolate, right? Same amount of energy, but I'm getting more nutrients out of the vegetables. I hope that makes sense. And so it does matter what you put in your body. It does matter the things that you eat. So when you're counting calories, you also want to make sure that it's not empty calories. So that's things that are going to benefit you. And so when it comes to dieting, I'm not a huge fan of any diet for that matter, because it's in my mind, it's not sustainable. It's not a reflection of real life. Real life comes with birthday parties. Real life comes with Thanksgiving and Christmas and all these other, you know, events that are focused around food. And so I'm more of the the, the side of, of, of balanced diet, like controlling what you eat, taking care of the things, uh, you know, monitoring the things that you're putting in your body. Um, but it's balanced. But nutrition is so important. And I know you've heard that before, but it, it can't be overstated. So exercise, nutrition, and the last thing, and this is probably one of the things that people pay least attention to, and that is sleep. Okay, sleep. Recovery is so essential for w- weight loss, for strength gains, for muscle gain, whatever it is. Recovery is so essential. And what a lack of sleep does is it boosts your cortisol, which is the the stress hormone. And when you are stressed out, you eat more. Okay. When you're stressed out, your body wants to eat more. And um, I just, for this is just, this happened to me last night, as a matter of fact. I was up working on a project till like 4 a.m. This is no lie. And I found myself around two o'clock eating some cupcakes <laughs> because I had a lack of sleep and your inhibitions go down also when you're, when you're, when you're really tired. So that's just one example. But sleep is so important. Stress goes up and it messes everything up in your life. Sleep. <clears throat> When you have the right amount of sleep, so the right amount, let's say it's seven to nine hours, I think that's the goal, somewhere in that window. And I realize that every day might be different depending on what you have going on in your world, but seven to nine hours. And uh, what that does is it brings your hormones back to a, back to balance. It restores everything that's been torn up throughout the day. And it's very, very recuperative. So sleep is so important. And so those are the three things. If you focus on exercise, you focus on nutrition, and you focus on sleep, and you do that consistently, whatever your goal is, you will see progress. And so I hope that's helpful. There's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of information, some good, some bad. But if you focus on the big rocks of fitness, you are going to see results. Exercise, nutrition, and sleep. I hope you have a great week. Go get it this week. Remember to build your house on a foundation that is solid, the Word of God, and to focus on exercise, nutrition, and sleep. Have a great week. I love you. I will see you next time on episode of Devos and Dumbbells. Be sure to follow me at Jared Ayers, excuse me, Jared Wayne Ayers on Instagram, Jared Ayers Fitness on Facebook, and um, JaredAyersFitness.com to stay up to date. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.